So the title of my presentation today was The Success Story of a Young Entrepreneur. And to be honest with you, I really hate this title. I wanted to call it The uh, Consecutive Failures of a Young Entrepreneur. Because I think you have to fail like before that. you can Thank succeed. You. If you're familiar with penny auctions, you know that unlike a traditional auction where it's free to bid, in penny auctions you pay a dollar or so every time you bid. And the price goes up with just a penny. But the problem with penny auctions, it's fun for the winner, but there's 20 losers. And they don't get their money back. So there's a lot of gambling implications and losers leave unhappy. What if you could take off the risk from the loser and create a great experience for everyone? Well, the idea I had was, what if we could, if you didn't win the auction, you could buy the item from our store and we'd refund all the money you spent bidding. So if you're going to buy it, you still, worst case scenario, you pay retail or you win a 95% off deal. And then we added to it, social and fun and gaming to it, and that was how deal that started taking off. We try to focus on the customer, just like Christian said, it's so incredibly important to be customer-centric. Um, you're not building your product for you, you're not building it for your team, you're building it for the customer. You also have to follow your analytics. A deal dash, we track more than 100 daily metrics. We hired the best team. I was so lucky, being really young, I was trying to surround myself with people that were way more experienced, way smarter than I was, and I was really lucky to be able to convince those people to join the team. And finally, we raised venture capital nine months after launch, um, and that's when DLS started taking off, which allowed us to expand. We decided to launch in the United States because the U.S. is by far the largest consumer market. And in e-commerce or in consumer internet in general, you either go big or you go home. So in the U.S., if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. So today we have 250,000 registered shoppers in America. We've shipped more than 100,000 products across the U.S. Our sales run rate is now more than $10 million. We've opened offices in a few, three different locations, and we're the fastest growing company in our market now, and we're clearly profitable. So that works, finally. Um, but that's, that's how I came to being an entrepreneur, and uh, kind of my story quickly. I want to talk about the things I learned and the things maybe I can give some practical advice um, that, that I've discovered. So the first step is, is getting started. And the most important thing is you can't delay it. You have to start right now. You do not delay it. And no excuses. People tell me that I talk with, you know, William, I don't have the money, I don't have the time, my parents, my spouse, my girlfriend, my boyfriend, no excuses, just do it. It's pretty simple. And then be bold and be fearless. And being fearless is not the same as not feeling fear. Being fearless means that you feel the fear, but you do it anyway. And I think what Christian said was really great, the positive energy. It's a fine, you know, we didn't make it right now, we'll make it, it's fine. You know, and that's really important. So now you're into the entrepreneur roller coaster. Welcome. You're in for a ride. Um, you're about to build your product, you start building your product. And the really important thing again is to be customer centric. I mentioned it before, but it's worthwhile mentioning it again. Which means that you have to test ideas. Don't fall in love. Don't fall in love, guys, really. You gotta really understand that what you like might not be the same that the customer likes. And you must test ideas against each other to see what the customer wants more. And that should drive your innovation, either here or there. Should we have more social? Should we have more gaming? Should we have Lower prices and larger quantity or more variety but higher pricing. All these types of things in our business, but it applies the same to any consumer-driven company. And track re metrics religiously. There's really no excuses for not knowing exactly how much your sales were yesterday, how many people visited your website, how many people emailed their friends and clicked links from those emails to your website. And we have a saying, love thy customer or someone else will. In the US, we have more than 100 competitors, more than 300 have launched, hundreds of millions of dollars of venture capital, so all these great smart people are chasing the same customers and you either love them or someone else will. Find old Indian guys with beards to help you out. No, find mentors. It's so important. I was so lucky finding people that were 10, 15, 20, 25 years ahead of me in their entrepreneur career. So they've been doing it for so much more. They have so much more value and they've seen everything and they can provide insights into me that I didn't have. It's so important. Then you also really have to be able to provide a value add. So learn, study. 
even though I didn't finish school, I, I really value education. I think it's so important to constantly be reading and constantly looking at what's the leading edge, especially if you're in new markets like consumer internet and combining social gaming with shopping. Things like gamification, there's only a handful of books out there. So if you really spend a lot of time getting to know your customers and testing different things out, you can start becoming an industry expert within a few years, um, which is really important. And listen and stay humble. Entrepreneurs need to be stubborn. They need to stay with their vision, but they need to listen. They need to learn from people that are way ahead of them, more experienced than them. And that's incredibly important moving forwards. And be hungry. Always continue to grow and evolve. Remember the roller coaster? Well, at some point, you hit challenges. And, uh, and when life hits you on the blind side, and you don't have enough money to pay your employees, or customers don't like your product, or technology breaks down, or any other issues you may face, you start heading here. The number one thing is you have to believe in your own vision. You have to believe and be excited about your product. Believe that you're going to get to where you're going eventually. Also, people around you, even people that are closest to you, may sometimes not share the same belief that you have. And, you know, they may, may even say, you know, maybe it's time for you to think about your other opportunities or throw the towel. But you should prove those naysayers wrong and get around, surround yourself with people who are just as excited as you are. And don't give up. You can never give up. And I think it's important to create your own reality as well. Because nobody will want to follow a leader if they don't believe in themselves. So you have to sometimes create your own reality and bring other people into it. Finally, the most important lesson I've learned is team, team building. It's all about the team. So, again, hire smarter people than you. Get surrounded by people that are way more experienced, way more better at what they do than you are, and try to convince those people to join your team. Once they do, nurture that. Give them the tools they need to win. Inspire them. Remove obstacles from their path, and it'll go and win for all of you. And lead through example. There's truly no other way of leading them through example. Whether you like it or not, you're leading through example. If you want your team members to fly coach, then you fly coach. If you want your team members to stay at cheap hotels when they travel for business, then you stay at cheap hotels when you travel for business. If you want your team members to work 12-hour days, you work 16-hour days. You lead through example, because your team is your most valuable asset. And without them, you don't really have a business at all. Before I go, I want to share with you one story. And I think this is a great story. Jeff had a flower shop. And he had it for several years. He was doing all right. He had his loyal customers. He loved what he did. He went to work. And people would buy his product. One day he comes to work and one of the largest flower corporations in the United States has just incorporated a set-up store right next to him. Now they're running deals like 50% off and Jeff can't compete. He doesn't have the volume, he doesn't have the sales and marketing expertise and he starts seeing his most loyal customers move away. Jeff is under pressure. He has to let go of some of his most trusted and loyal employees. He struggles six months later, an even bigger chain opens up on the other side of Jeff's store. And at this point, even his friends are telling him, Jeff, maybe it's time you move on. Even his wife is saying, maybe you should throw in the towel. There's other things in life. But Jeff won't have any of it. He continues to struggle. But one day, Jeff comes to work, and he's determined to win. He knows there's a way. And he puts up a big sign that says, main entrance here. <laughs> and he sells more flowers that year than any other year before that. And when you guys go out and you're entrepreneurs, I want you to follow Jeff's example. And sometimes when the going gets tough, you just got to pick yourself up and keep going. <laughs> so don't get a job, get a mission, because entrepreneurs change the world. Thank you very much. Very moving presentation, I should thank you for that. Um, I'd like to ask you two questions. Is that um, how big was the role of your inner instincts and gut feelings in developing your business and evolving as an entrepreneur, as well as 
uh, how do you differentiate the right instinct from false hope? I think the customers vote their credit cards and let you, they'll let you know if it's false or if it's true really fast. So you launch something, you believe in it, and every time you launch something, you have to believe in it. You know, if you launch with the idea that maybe this won't work, you're not going to convince somebody else if you can't convince yourself. So you create your own reality, this is the best thing ever, you test it out, customers don't like it, you move on, you get as excited about the next thing, but you keep on going. So I think that's how you distinguish between false hope, which I don't really, kind of can't relate to, because you know, you believe it and then the customers tell you if it's right or wrong. Yeah. You talk to them. Yeah, but I mean, like, how do you know that, you know, this is the right thing to start with? Okay, you've done some research, but, you know, you can never know whether it will succeed. Exactly. Um, that's, that's a great question. I, I don't think there's any surefire way of knowing. Yeah. You can't be afraid to, f to fail. I mean, um, you know, Christian said that they weren't really that wise men when they started. I'm a monkey in our office half the time. I'm just trying out different things, talking with customers. So I don't think you have to take yourself that seriously. Just go out and try your ideas and believe in them if they don't work. You know, and try to get to market as soon as possible. If you're a consumer internet company, you know, it's different for products where you have a lot of development costs and you have to really you know, get approval from different authorities. But if you're a consumer internet company, you can really test things really fast. You can sit down with a developer with Pizza and Beer over a weekend and get something out and get immediate customer feedback. So. Hey, first of all, you know, huge thanks to you as well. Very good presentation, and I think you know, congratulations. Your business is already very successful. That is something I don't know if you if you all realize that you know, significant revenues and significant amounts of product out there. That's great. Thanks, Christian. It's, it's all about the team and our shared board member, Mikko Swan, yeah, as well. He's a good guy. But one thing I just want to mention because we talked about the kind of like schooling and, and the kind of like attitude of entrepreneurship and all that stuff, and that we have the auto kind of you know world today here. One thing that I've, you know, still being in, in the other community quite, quite a lot and, and, you know, attending lectures at Tech Online and so on. Uh, one thing that I've noticed that, you know, uh, trying to put this discreetly, not all the professors are very exciting. And I guess you all know that. But don't, don't worry about that because, because, you know, we're still at Stanford here. Uh, and, but it doesn't matter because you can get excited. You know, you don't need the professors to be excited. If they're boring, whatever, you know, hook up with the professors who are, who are more exciting and then hook up with, you know, with each other and, and do it. Because when, you know, when we started the company, there wasn't any Aldo University, and there were really maybe only one professor that was exciting, Mr. Peter Kelly, and he helped us quite a lot in the beginning. But I think that you know, it has to come from you. Don't worry about it if the school isn't perfect, or the professors are a bit lame sometimes, or whatever. That doesn't stop anyone. If you want to do it, you can do it yourself. How, how do you like our November and December? <laughs> Excuse me? How do you like our... our I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like our mentality or... I love November because that's when the holiday season begins. People buy Christmas gifts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're happy to sell those. <laughs> to each and every one of you, if you have a US address, go to dealdash.com, sign up. No. no, it's great. I mean, it's, it doesn't bother us. I spent a lot of time in the US as well, but... Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. This is your season. Excellent. Thanks. <laughs> thank you.